before you write your first line of code, there are a few important things you must understand. Like, what web development is actually, who is a web developer, how to learn it properly, and how to solve problems. All right, so let's break it down together. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's your sister here again, alhamdulillah, habiba alaylum. So my job here on this channel is to simplify the process of web development for you. Uh, you need to learn it in a very simple way. Everything must not come hard before we can progress in it. A web developer is the one behind the scene of every application and website you have on your laptop. What is web development? So web development is the process of building websites and web apps. There are two parts. Front end, this has to do with everything users see and interact with. So when you go to a website, the color, the different shapes you are seeing on the website, the arrangement, the font of the text there, the images you are seeing, the video, uh, that form you are filling, all those things you can see, that is the work of a front-end developer, all right? Then back-end. The back-end is the behind-the-scenes stuff. Like, when you're trying to log in and it allows you, and another person is trying to log in and it says, no, you have not signed up yet. So that is the work of the back-end. What is HTML, what is CXS, and JavaScript? HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This is the structure or skeleton of a web page. Okay, let me just say this is like a skeleton of, um, let's say, a human or skeleton of anything you can think of. All right, so that is what HTML does. So it gives it its shape uh everything that needs to be there like okay uh this this thing i'm trying to create must have long hand long leg uh there must be head there must be this there must be that that is the function of html so it pulls every shape in place now let's go to the css css is the cascading style sheet so cascading style sheet is what is behind this, the design, the color, and the layout of your website or web apps. Like, okay, you know when you visit different websites, they're going to have different colors. So what adds those beauties to it is the work of CSS. So it gives it, okay, this font should be here, this color should be like this. And then, okay, I want the login button to be at the top right corner and uh, the sign up button should be here. There should be one menu uh, at the left side. There should be another menu at the top, something like that. So that is the work of CXS. The arrangement, the color, the building. So this can be uh, signified as when you now had flesh to your skeleton, when you had body to your skeleton. So you have a skeleton. Let's say you are trying to create a robot that looks like human being. So you already have a skeleton. That is the work of HTML. So now adding a skin or something to it that makes it look like exactly what you want it to look like. Like, okay, I want it to look like a human. I want it to look like a lion. That is the work of CSS. Now, the next thing is JavaScript. So JavaScript is what gives website its functionality. It is the brain that adds actions and logic. Aha. You see that your robot that you have created, you are giving it skeleton, that is to give it all the shapes you want, and you have given it flesh, like, okay, I want it to look like a white American, or I want this skeleton, I want this robot to look like an African. Um, that is the work of CSS. Now, but the work of AF, JavaScript is when you want it to be functional, like you tell your robot, robot, kneel down, and it can kneel down. Listen to your instruction and follows it. So you tell it to do this and it can do it. That is the work of JavaScript. Because 
when it is just left the way it was when css was added to it it is just like a statue it is not functional you cannot instruct it to do anything so it is just there for being their sake like people can just love it wow it's beautiful i love the eye you add to it i love the hair texture you gives it i love the nails you give it and all of that so people People might love all those things on it, but it's not going to be functional. It's not going to be useful. You cannot say, okay, robot, store this message and it will store it. Robert, do this, do that. And so that is the work of JavaScript to a website or a web app. Right, so let's talk about the career options for anyone learning web development. Once you learn the basics, you can go deeper and become a front-end developer dealing with just the user interface like okay all i want to learn how to do is how to create the front end like let people see this let people what people will interact with you can decide to be a back-end developer and as a back-end developer you are the one who will work on the database like when somebody's logging into or sign up into this website the information should be stored here like many of us some people it has been years since they signed it into their facebook the, immediately they signed up there is nothing that makes them to sign in again because that app already recognizes your information so that is the work of a back-end developer it has stored that information it has you know the the cookies and all of this so it is the back-end developer that deals with the cookies you see on the website that will tell you accept cookies accept these cookies i have so for cookies to be stored for api and a lot of ip address and all of that so that is the work of back-end developer then you can as well be a full stack developer a full stack developer is the person who can uh, who can conveniently and comfortably work as a front-end developer and also as a back-end developer doing the two together design the interface and all of that and also make it functional add database to it add every other thing that needs to be added for a functional website and a web app you can as well be a freelancer as a freelancer you already have this knowledge and you think i don't want to work under a particular company so i want to work for this work for that work for that i'll be able to work for different people at the same time and just tell people i'm available for your project what do you want to create okay you need website for your Complain, I can do it for you. This is my price. I, I'm charging you 4,000 pounds for this and you do it, you get paid and that is it. You may not see another job in the next one month or two months. You are different from someone that is being hired by the company. When you are hired by a company, whether the company makes sales or no, you're going to uh, collect your salary. So freelancer, you can work with anybody at any time. All right. Then remote worker, remote worker, as a front-end developer or as a back-end developer or as a full-stack developer, it only means that you are working offline. I mean, you are working online rather. So you don't go to your company to work physically. So that is a remote worker. And as well, you can just build your own product and businesses. Part of being able to build your own product and business is that you might decide to just create an app and monetize it. You know, there are a lot of paid app on Play Store and Apple Store. There are some apps that if you want to use them, there is a, a kind of amount you'll be paying monthly or weekly or yearly. Like Canva, if you if you subscribe to Canva Pro, you will be paying some amount of money. CapCut, a lot of apps like that. So you can decide to be okay. This is what I want to base on. I want to be developing good apps and let people pay for me. All right. So now let's go to the tools we'll be using to learn all these courses. We will start with tools that work for everyone. At least as beginners, we don't want anything to be difficult for you. So we're going to start from the very simple part. All right. So you'll be needing Trebedit. That is for those learning with their Android phones. If you are learning with your laptops, you'll be needing VS Code. So make sure you download this app and install them. So if you have both devices like you have an android phone and you also have a laptop it's better you download both and you need to get comfortable with both so that you can learn anywhere anytime with either of it all right 
So let's go to the learning tips. Here is how to learn faster. Watch them practice immediately. When you watch any of my tutorial video, make sure you practice immediately. Don't skip. Take it step at a time. Take it one step at a time. Like, don't feel like, oh, it's seven minutes long. So because of that, you have watched one minute, two minutes, and you decided, let me take it to three minutes. Let me take it to the 40 minutes and all of that. No, no, no. Make sure you watch every step. One information, one very vital information might have been passed within one second or so. So you need to watch every step. All right, make sure you write notes down in your own words in the best way you have understood the video. Write notes down. Like, okay, they say this is what HTML does. Okay, they say this is what Edins does and all of that. Then make sure you build mini projects to test what you have learned. So whenever you learn a new, you have a new tutorial, make sure you build a mini project in place of that. Like, you can just say something about yourself Try to code it out. It's something about anybody close to you. Things like that. Right? So let's go to problem solving. You know, you will get stuck sometimes. We all do. Everybody gets stuck at a time. And that is totally fine. When you get stuck, what do you have to do? The first step is read the error message slowly so that you can get the information. You can see some error message is going to even tell you the exact line that has issue under a particular file. So you're going to know that, okay, it's talking about line 74. It's talking about line 17. Are you getting it? And the next thing is check your code carefully. Slight spelling error might cost you a whole lot of headache. Like, or you want to add color to your project and you mistakenly spelled it as C-O-L-O-U-R. Uh, you need to understand that. HTML uses American English. So in most cases, you need to spell using American English. So you don't go and write C-O-L-O-U-R and expect it to work. It's not going to understand that. So you need to put C-O-L-O-R. So you need to look into that very well. After you have checked your code very well and you didn't see any error of uh, from your side, you can as well search Google. Like, if I want to do this, what do I have to do? If I'm seeing this error, what is the solution for it and all of that? Also, if you have done all of this, then you can ask in the comment section or seek help in our group. That is exactly why we have created that group for you to seek help from. That is the essence of the mentorship and that community. Are you getting it? Right? So we don't want this to come first. As a web developer to be, you need to learn how to challenge yourself and be able to solve problems on your own. It is not immediately you see one error or something is not working fine, you start coming to the group. Hey, this one is not working, no. It is not, there's nothing like it's not working. You are not doing the right thing. That is why it is not working. So whenever you see that you have not achieved the exact result your tutor has achieved, go through your work very well by yourself. Don't seek help. You need to learn how to solve problems on your own. It is after you have tried all your possible best. And I would know. When you seek help in the group, I would know if you have tried to solve it on your own. If you have not tried to solve it on your own, I will have to send you back to go and try it on your own. Because that is what we want to raise. I want to train self-dependent developers, not those ones that will be depending on everybody here and there. All right, so let's go to how to retain what you learn. You see, to remember what you have learned, you need to learn how to teach someone else. Like your younger brothers or sisters at home, your friend in school, like, I'm learning something. Let me quickly explain to you. Let me do this. Let me do that. Ha. You can invite your friend to come and join the cohort such that you have someone to discuss with in school. Like, oh, that image, I tried to get it this way. I did it. I did that. Aha. So when you teach someone or discuss that topic, you learn it better. Practice regularly. Coding is not a kind of thing that, okay, I carried it last two weeks, I'm carrying it today. Even if you spent five hours on it, the day you carried it last week, and today again you want to spend another five hours, you cannot get the same result as someone who spent like, let's say 30 minutes 
each day on it. So every day you must practice. Try to look at something from your code. All right. Another thing is repeat other lessons after a few days. Once it's becoming three, four days that you learn a particular topic, make sure you revisit it, at least to do something on it so that you won't forget. Then create mini projects from memory. Try and look at a website or just see an app and feel like, I can try to create what they put here. I can try to create this app. I can try to make, uh, you know, try to do that a lot. It's going to help you, all right? Now that you understand the basics, you are ready to start coding. In the next video, I'll walk you through the use of Trebedit and Visual Studio Code and how to install them, inshallah, then writing your first HTML code. It's going to be exciting, I'm telling you. All right, take good care of yourself. Bye.